Hello guys, the DB Grinder here, back at it again with another video, and this time I'm here with Aaron Dial. And what'd you play, and what'd you play? I played Dragon Link, and I came second at the remote duel uh, YCS. And is there any shout outs you want to do before we hop into the video? Yeah, so shout out to my team, Team Genesis, uh, here on the West Coast. Um, shout outs to my testing partners from there, Tristan Bridges. Um, Landon Oliver, Javier, Daniel Ramirez, and uh, shout out to the local guys from Vancouver, BC, and Canada. Uh, Andrew Yee, Russell Young, Tyler Langis, Justin Chorney, and Nicholas as well. So yeah, and the rest of the local guys as well. JBJ, all you guys. All right, and with that being said, let's just hop right in. Cool, okay. So I'll start off with the main deck. Uh, I played 44 cards because... Um, there was no room in the side deck, so the most, so the only other thing that I could think of was to cram the main deck. So that's exactly what I did. Um, so I played uh, the kind of like spice card, I guess, Chaos Emperor, the Dragon of Armageddon. Uh, this card was my favorite card. Shout out to Andrew Yee for letting me borrow this. Um, this card was really good. Oh, and biggest shout out to Daniel Zhang, by the way. Outside of this card, all these other cards are his. So shout out to him. So. Um, yeah, so this card is really good. Like this is a lot of people will be like, "Oh, you have like one striker dragon. How does this deck work now?" Well, technically, with this, you have more than one striker dragon, right? And then you have chaos space, and then chaos Armageddon. So um, this card was really, really good, and it being a level eight um, will facilitate some more synergy that I have in my deck as well. Along with that, you kind of have like the other boss card. I consider these like my BLS and like chaos emperor, I guess, cards, but uh, these are like my blowout cards and the cards that I want to see. Um, this I can see turn one. This is more like a turn two thing where I just want to blow up their board and then go for game. So both of these are really good, but this is really good also turn one, two, where you can just rip a card out of their hand. So it's amazing. And it being a level eight, there's something that I play in my extra deck, but these two being level eight, lots of synergy with this deck, which I'll get into a little bit more. Um, love these two cards, though. Then you have like the standard uh, red MD, uh, black metal. I'm only playing one because I didn't think Droll was going to be like a huge card for this um, for this tournament, and it actually wasn't. A lot of people weren't playing high impact hand traps, and that's why I decided to play this because Ash, Valor, Emperor, Ghost Bell, like those cards were the ones that were seeing a lot of play, and cards like Droll, Nibiru, those weren't like making the cut for a lot of decks, so. Um, that's kind of why I thought this deck would be like the best deck to run, and it proved to do uh, pretty well, actually. Um, so yeah, so this card, if Droll becomes more popular, obviously you increase this card, but for now the one was good. One Brotar, I know a lot of people are cutting this because Al LP is not here anymore, but I'm still playing um, the World Legacy Guard Dragon, and I'm playing three of it, so I think it works really well with that. And this card just synergizes with these two because, you know, you seal, you summon this, and then you add one of these, whichever one you need, to go to turn two, to go to the other turn, your turn, back to your turn, and then kill your opponent. So I really like this card still. I wouldn't cut it. So, yeah, really like this card. Um, I played one Black Dragon, one White, generic, three Safer. I mean, safer, safer, but even now it has even more synergy because you have the two level eights that you can add back. Really cool play if you have like Ravine plus this and you don't have any starter cards. Ravine, dump, uh, dump, pitch this from your hand, dump the safer, safer to add this, activate the chaos dragon, add the safer to your hand. You now have your your opener that you want. So, and you have this in your extra, right? Which is going to be really important, like I said. So. Yeah, so really important. Love Safer, the synergy, things it does, really great. Two Chamber, um, could be one, could be three, I don't know, but um, I like two because I was playing 44 and I really wanted to see Tiding. Um, I win second out of all the rounds uh, for this entire YCS. I think I only want two dice rolls. And... Um, this card, like, I know a lot of people think it's only, like, a going first card, but this card, even with the tiding, can be, like, an extender. So I really like this card, and um, I don't know if I'd play any less or any more, but, yeah, I'd keep it as is. It was really good. Um, 
rocket package, two tracer only, two synchron, one recharger, one apps router. Technically, I guess this could be two, would be something to consider. Two Noctovision. So, like, when I first pack in the final, he brought up, like, a really interesting point where, like, he was mapping out my hand and he knew what was in my hand. And this card really helps with that because it adds a blank in your hand that they can't always map out. And it could be an extender. First of all, this card alone is an ex extender and it's really, really good. And uh, the other effect that no one ever knows about is it can protect your tiding when people target it with, like, Chaos Spay or Chaos uh, Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twister, or anything like that. But, um... Yeah, this card is um, this card's really good. So I could potentially see this ball be up to three, but for me, two worked out for this uh, this event. So I was really happy to have it. And every time I saw this card, it was I was always happy. So I could definitely see it going to three. That's it for like my monsters, my combo monsters. I still have more monsters, but these are hand traps. And the next four cards are the reason why I, I made it forty four which was two Valor for um, Tri-Brigade and then two Ghost Bell. So, like, the versatility on these cards and the application is, like, so widespread that, like, you can Ghost... There's so much you can do with Ghost Bell right now. Like, you can hit the Prank Kids, you can hit the Revolt, you can hit, like, you know, in my deck, if I played a Mirror Mash, World Legacy, if... Um, there's just so much, like... It's like an Ash, basically, this card, right? This and Ash have so much, like application and like things that they can do which makes it really good valor is just like the best card against um tri brigade right now which makes it really really strong so i wanted some form of these i had these in my side initially and i like these because they're white so if you mail off a chaos ruler so i thought that was really nice and um why well, i wanted to include them in the main deck and make it 44 instead of 40. um the three ash blossom similar to what i was saying the thing is is I think the important thing to understand is we were playing at a time where the meta wasn't really defined and we just had a list come out. So it wasn't really like we knew Tri Brigade was going to be the most represented. We didn't really know how well Drytron was going to be. Um, so you kind of had to hit some, you needed to play cards that hit multiple matchups. And I think Ash Blossom definitely did that. So that's why I played three of it. And it's really good in combination with any others. But because we're also talking about like a, div a diverse format, you also want something that's like really good. And this is like, I feel like anytime you play Valor, Gamma is just as good because this card actually destroys a card. And this card was actually insane. Like I would say in Top Cut today, I lost every single dice roll and every single time I opened Gamma and this card just won me going second, like against Prank Kids, again, not against Pack. He had the Ash, but... Uh, in top 16, when I was uh, Trevor, he was really nice to play against. And, like, he was, uh, yeah, he, you know, I had Gamma on his one uh, prank kid. He passed. Same with the two tri brigades that I versed and Sam and, uh, and Senna. Same thing. You just kind of hit it. You hit their normal summon monsters, and they pass turn. So, so happy that I saw this card when I was going second. Um, also has application when going first in combination with this card. Pack laughed because uh, when I opened up my hand, I did have Gamma in my hand. So I used Chaos Space and I pitched Safer. And he goes, hmm. And then he, I don't know if he had something or not, but he goes, yeah, I don't want to walk into the Gamma. So he knew it, but a lot of people did walk into the Gamma. So yeah, these two car cards in combination were really nice. But um, yeah, your starter. Bit of an iffy card. I know some people are cutting it, some people are keeping it. Three World Legacy. I like it because I play Brotar. I also like this card because it makes my Pisky live. I like manipulating my zones and moving my my uh, arrows for certain cards that I need to move. I really like this card. It did brick me in the finals. I know a lot of people ask me about what my finals hand was when I bricked. I gammed and then. Um, Belled um, pack, and then the rest of my hand was a Valor, two World Legacy, and then an Absor Router. So I drew the second one of this. If it was any other dragon, I would have popped off. But yeah, it was just sad that it had to be. I mean, maybe cutting this down to two maybe might be the way to go, but I still like this card. So yeah, and then we have the three Itali, which is Quick Launch, one Boot, one Ravine. And then your two tiding, two broken traps. Is there anything that you would uh, change about the main deck? 
I think maybe just like the world legacy. Like I'm so, I, I mean, my OCD kicks in when anytime I'm over 40. So this was like a huge adjustment for me where I just kind of last minute just thought, okay, I need to, I want to put in these four hand traps, a two bell or two bell, because they couldn't, I couldn't fit them in my side deck. But um, outside of that, like maybe the world legacy, I did side these out a lot of times when I was going second. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what I think of world legacy yet. I did like it. It came up at times. Outside of that, I don't think there's anything else that I would change. Maybe like a, a second abs or a third knock. But honestly, it ran perfect, so I shouldn't even be complaining. <laughs> um, Except in the finals. Yeah, uh, we can go on to the extra deck if you want. Sure. So extra was one striker dragon, technically one, but there's chaos space, Armageddon, things like that. So you're actually playing kind of like more than one, but... Yeah, you have your one of Striker Dragon, uh, one Pisty, works well with World Legacy, so that's why I like it. Um, the times that you don't have the Tiding, you can Ravine, like if, let's say if you have like a Quick Launch in your hand or if you have the Tracer, you can always just dump the um, Chamber, um, you know, use World Legacy or like use Pisty to bring it back to add the Tiding to your hand. So I think it's really important to have Tiding in hand because of this card too. Like having two bounces, I think the only card, the only deck that two bounces doesn't work against is um, Drytron. But outside of that, I think like the two bounces is so pivotal against any one of the matchups, like any matchup that you verse. So sometimes like, you know, having Seal and Tiding is just, enough right and the thing is is um like you and i were talking about before this is this isn't just a disruption card it's it's a like a recovery card in that it gets you like a brotar brotar gets you your chaos and or your levy gets you your safer and etc etc so yeah this card is really really good i would say i think this card was my favorite of the entire um of the entire tourney so this is the hand trap magnet romulus this card just gets hand trapped 24 7 like <laughs> it was funny because halfway through I started switching on my order and I used to go like knock uh, Chainlink 2, ROM 1 and I just started saying ROM 2 because more people were playing like Skullmeister but like this always got hit with Valor, Imperm, etc, etc. So um, yeah, this card just it just ate up the hand traps and I mean it's good. There's, I think it's different though. If you're playing like the Remus and the Dragoonity version it hurts a lot more. But when you're playing more of this like kind of control version where you go into seal, tiding, except and like savage and things like that, hand trapping this doesn't hurt as much. So it's still interesting to see what people hand trap in this deck now that it's like kind of new, newish. Uh, Striker Dragon will get hand trapped. Romulus will get hand trapped. Um, those are kind of like your most like common ones. But Pack knew what he was doing when I played against him, so he knew exactly what the hand trap, which was good. Um, Quad Boral, insane against um, Tri Brigade. <laughs> I can't even say enough about that. <laughs> Being in my feature, that says more than I can even say, to be honest with you. Just Soul Charge 3, pop their card. Boral Sword game. Like, it's just insane. I play Dill. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I think about this card. It didn't come up a lot. It didn't come up at all in Top 16. But um, in Swiss, this card came up. Theoretically, like there was like this play that you can do where you have Quad and you have Dill. And this is before you even go Rocket Tracer. And what you can do is you can um, like Quad, pop your Dill, summon like one or two Rockets, bring this back, and then these two can make an Appalooza. So I was like, that's kind of like a cute play that you can do. But it just never came. I never did it, I don't think. And um, this card, it was okay. Like... It did help me link climb sometimes into like the vocal sword and things like that. But like thinking about it and if having like more time and testing, definitely like IP Mascarena, you know, Axis Code, things like that. There's like so many cards. Like you're missing so many cards now since LP and Striker left. But there's so many filler spots that you can fill it up with so many different things, and it's hard to really say which one's the best. So kind of like you're your own discretion i guess but i feel like i could have played something better than that or like triple burst triple burst would have been better i think uh the halky came up sometimes apo same thing saryuja boral sword 
came up all the time, <laughs> especially going second and just trying to game them. I figure that my win, you know, the the way you win with this deck going second is Boral Silver, Chaos Ruler, Savage, Attack for Game. Like, that's 9,000. Like, that's how you have to do it. So that's what my goal was every single time when I went second, is find a way to Boral Sword at Chaos Ruler Savage and go for game. So speaking of which, the Savage, a lot of people are laughing about this because I summoned this when there was no links in the grave just to upgrade it into a hot red. But um, yeah, it was an unorthodox play, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and it got me the win, so I was happy with that. Busted card... <laughs> Pega Ruler, he's so good. Mills 5, as a light or dark. This card is what works in really good combination with the other, the Chaos Armageddon and the Levian here. Um, I'll show you how in a bit, and the Hot Red. It works well because of this card. So I play Zombie Stein, because I wanted a second Hot Red, because I think Hot Red is really good. Um, you know, the most broken board that you end on is like Zombie Stein, Savage, Seal, and then Tiding if you're super lucky, but um, like Zombie Stein was insane because you would you would banish um, you know to resummon this and then if this leaves the field it gets banished but if you overlay it it doesn't so you would just overlay it with the um, with the Chaos M with the Levian here and it stays in your grave that way and you have a negator as well on the Zombie Stein so Zombie Stein came up a lot actually I would say I made him quite a few times so I am happy I played him. Uh, one question I have about the extra deck is, uh, how was the yeah. Skull Dread for you? The Skull Dread? Yeah. <laughs> it was um, it was iffy. And that's, I think, like, again, there's a lot of cards in here, like the Appaloosa, the Saryuja. There was, like, a few times, actually, where, um, like, when I would verse my slower kind of matchups where I needed to play, like, more of a game of, like, cards in hand and cards on field. Example being Striker that plays Mystic Mind. I like this card a lot more because you would dig a lot more. So I would focus on making this in my in my turn one. Like it's not impossible to make this. There's actually a way to do this with like the, um, you know, the Halki and things like that. And because Nibiru wasn't that popular this weekend, I knew I could get away with this a bit more. So it was really good. And one time that I did get Nibiru, I still ended up continuing because I went like Brotar, get Levy, and then I was able to get another monster and just link all four into a Saryuja, draw a bunch, uh, and then just still combo from there. So this card was good, I think, but again, they're all kind of situational and when it comes up. And they're not it's nothing like set in stone, I don't think. These are all flex cards is what I call them. So but yeah, I, I think I, I did like it. One time this got me like I got hand trapped and I ended up going to Saryuja. Saryuja did into a talent. Um used it and was able to just gain advantage from there I, and all i did i think i just passed on like a seal but because i knew his hand it was just like this allowed me to get to a seal and and see his hand through a talent so this card this card had its moments i would say during the event all right uh did you miss like an access code or anything throughout the tournament not really, no. I don't think I ever did miss access code, to be honest with you. I missed an IP and uh, and a um, triple burst and uh, the other card, Unicorn. But I don't think... I, I can't actually remember a time where um, access code actually ever came up. So, no. Yeah, actually, no. Interesting. Um, yeah. I know the, the IP stuff a lot of people have been switching over to. But uh, like, like I was saying a lot in my videos, like sadly, like day one was like, what, like three weeks ago now? Um, it so was. It was three weeks ago. And that was when the list kind of like shortly came out, but like a week, I think we had to prepare. And I mean, the IP stuff was really good. And uh, I don't know, like, you know, you kind of just test with your partners. You see what's good. Um, I thought the deal was really good. Like, I like a free summon. And this card was good because this card allowed me to, like, there was a lot of times where I was missing, like, a link, too. So I would be able to. This guy actually facilitated my Boral Swords a lot of time, which was pretty good. And that's how I would go for the kill. So Dill wasn't bad. Dill was actually pretty good. Um, but again, he, he just didn't come up as often as I would hope he would. So I think that's why, like, a lot of times... There's like some of these cards, like I would say these guys, uh, Halki, I guess. These guys are your flex spot. 
like you have these four that are your your flex. I feel like Appaloosa, you just kind of have to play. Like it's it's really good and it does come up. And then the three of these are kind of like your flex spot where where they can be kind of whatever the access code IP unicorn or triple burst or whatever. So yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to the side deck. Sure. So nothing too spicy about the side. It was again, we're in a format where it's like you don't really know what's going to be played. You know, you have a general idea and like you know what the top decks are going to be, like Tri Brigade, Drytron. Um, you know, I, I didn't expect Dragon Link, but then like part of me was also kind of scared where I try to pick as many cards that were versatile against as many matchups as possible. So like your Nibiru against all combo decks, right? Like this this card is is playable or has some sort of like application that it can be used within. Droll was a bit interesting. I don't know if this was part of me being scared of the mirror. I actually didn't know if the mirror would be um, relevant or not. I thought, I kind of wondered if anybody would be on the same strategy or if, you know, people would know, you know, how good like the Dragon Link deck still is. But I figured that it wouldn't. But I thought, like, instead of playing something like Cycle Reader that's only good against Drytron, which I think after Blade went out at top 16, there were none of. So I'm glad, like, I pl- I picked more of, like, a versatile card that was good against, like, Ivers and Shadal invoked. It was good against. It was good against Drytron. The Mirror Match, if I ever came across it, Infinite Track, Ivers round one and round two. So, like, against, like, kind of, like, those rogue decks, especially in an event like this where you get, like, a free mat and, like, people are just kind of entering with fun decks and rogue- roguish type of decks, like, the Droll really came in. But in Top Cut, like, after... Like, as soon as Top 16 came, this card never even saw my main deck. So it just kind of stayed there. So, yeah, it was a bit interesting. Um, on the other hand, then you have, like, something like Skullmeister. This is, like, specifically for Prank Kids. Uh, has other application against, like, Drytron as well. Um, so, yeah, this card was, uh, was good for what it was intended for. Um, three talents. Um we were talking about this before this card draws chaos space so this card is pretty good or scales a card but like this card is so good going first or second like again senna i ended up playing this going second he had the anti-spell but i was able to like hot red and do some stuff around it uh just because they sure egg and that's why i think this card this card is so good at breaking boards too so um definitely would play this card going second and i started doing it a lot um more so recently i would say put it going second uh two cosmic and then two twin, um, the prank kid, uh, you know, quick play uh, fusion card. Uh, what else is there? Schism, uh, anti spell, things like that. Like you need these, I think for sure. Um, and then you have like for the rogue decks, like there was, you know, I actually lost to Caesar in, um, I think it was round ten. I think I lost to him in Swiss, but. I did put these in because I had a feeling like Rogue would kind of be relevant. Uh, Feather Duster, I would cut this card. I don't even think this card came in a whole lot. But this card was MVP, especially against uh, Sam Chung in top eight, which was Red Reboot. So he was playing Tri Brigade Zoo, sets up his board, and then he ends up... Um, he, I goes Normal Summon Safer, and he goes Activate Revolt. And I Red Reboot him. He either has to have Assault Judgment. I don't think he did. I think he was on Strike, or maybe he was on... A, like, I think he maybe had an Imprint, but I know he was on a Strike, I'm pretty sure. But um, if they are on Strike and on a Judgment, then this card just goes through, their Revolt gets negated, you Boral Sword them, you do whatever you want, and it's just game. So this card was so clutch. Like, so happy I played that. This card, not as much, but it's still there. Just wondering, why'd you only play uh, two Twin Twisters? Yeah, so two twin. So my theory behind the ratios were like, you know, I could do. I know a lot of people like the the theory of like, um, like the three ofs, right? So they would do like the three twin twister and three cosmic, for example, which I was doing for a while. But then I was kind of afraid of like, again, like the rogue matchups, the outledge things like that. So I kind of wanted a a mix match of these two. So I thought like a two and two ratio would be kind of nice. I also followed it like from. I think the week leading up to this, I did a lot of like researching just based off of OCG and seeing what they were doing. And it was kind of like either Lightning Storm 
they they would do like two twin two lightning storm or like a ratio kind of like that and i thought to myself well instead of like i don't think lightning storm is applicable right now especially with prank kids being a deck and the um the quick play spell card so and then with people playing anti-spell as well so i thought to myself well i like twin in certain situations i like cosmic in certain situations and it did come up like in swiss i versed a prank kids player who use a card blizzard on me on my quick launch and i had no other play and um that targets your face up spell card to negate it bounces it back to your hand and negates it so i cosmic my own um quick launch and i was able to proceed from there and game him so i am glad that i kind of like these it's weird it definitely is like a weird ratio but it came up and it actually worked out really well and i'm happy about it so the only other like the other thing that could have happened was, and this is what I had initially, was this was three twin, this was three cosmic, but I really liked Red Reboot against Tri Brigade, and then Feather Duster. I thought I would just try out. So, yeah. That uh, that cosmic versus Blizzard play is kind of nuts. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> that was crazy. Shout out to Daniel Ramirez. Yeah, he was he was watching that. He's like, yo, that's so next level. So. Um, we were like five minutes away from time too, so yeah, that was a crazy play. Uh, I guess yeah. I don't really have any more questions for you. Do um, you have anything you want to say before we uh, hop off the video? No, just that um, you know, thank you for doing this video. Um, I really do appreciate it. I really appreciated my time at this YCS and coming second. Um, huge shout out to Paku Wan. Um, and yeah, Dragon Link isn't dead, and I'm hoping a lot more people pick it up and um, yeah, and start playing it. All right, uh, congrats on the top once again. And with that being said, the DB Grinder signing off. Peace.